Hey everybody, today on Rado Runs, we're previewing a prototype of Delta. But before I get going, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goose, you'll know what they are. And if you've done that, well, then welcome to the mysterious Camargo Delta. It is the 19th century, we are in a steampunk world, and we are going to be trying to explore this mysterious location and uncover all of its secrets uh, by deploying our trusty band of followers. We've got scientists, we've got explorers, we've got researchers, we've got all all kinds of people, and we are going to be using um, our deck of cards, which we will be building up deck builder style over the course of the game, in this worker placement style exploration steampunk game. I'm going to show you how it works today in a two-player run-through. I am the yellow player, Jen is the purple player, and I am the first player, which means the last thing that is done as part of setup, after we find out what the initial cards and uh, missions and objectives and inventions are, a bunch of stuff gets drawn randomly to seed the board, uh, since I'm the first player, I I will be the first to pick. How do I want to start out? I have to put my little player marker on one of these five spots. The higher up I am, the more likely I am to be first player and get first dibs on everything. And that's good. In a card drafting game like this, uh, where you're racing against your opponent for everything, you want to be first. But if I take this spot, I get nothing. Whereas if I take uh, this spot, then I get a dirigible, a hot air balloon. And uh, what would a steampunk game be without people traveling around in dirigibles? I think I like that. I am probably going to get first player, and I can do a little bit more exploring uh, in the Delta this year than I otherwise might be able to do. Alrighty, <clears throat> so we'll see. Because now Jen comes along. She could be first if she wants, but that means she gets nothing. Nothing! And she says, I want something, not nothing. So she will forego being first, which means she could get an initiative star, she could get a temporary engineer slash scientist in her employment, or she could get an extra coin! And who doesn't want to be rich? So Jen will take that. So Jen just got a coin. Now, if we were playing a three or four player game, of course, the other players would come along and get the initiative, get the scientist, or get first player and nothing else. But we're playing two player, so we are done with this. I am the first player. I am not ready to set sail, but whatever you, whatever the equivalent is for balloons, set air, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> and it is time to inter introduce my crew. Each player starts with the same deck of 10 followers. Although, randomly as part of setup, three of them were exhausted, put into discard piles. And unbeknownst to me, I, I didn't even look, as part of random setup, I left my super genius person behind. Oh, he's the really smart one. Although, I don't know, is he a robot? Does he just have breathing problems? I'm not quite sure. Um, actually, could it be a she for that matter? But anyway, this is my resident in super smarty pants who could function as an engineer or a scientist. I will not have their services until at the very least the next round. And I should say, folks, this game takes place over six rounds or six years of research and exploration. So... I do have access to all of these people, and on my turn, I'm going to pick one of them, and they are going to be deployed to the workshop to maybe do some inventions and stuff, to the Delta to do some exploration and stuff, or the research library to do some research and stuff. But that's not all they do, because these are multi-use cards. When a person gets placed, the first thing they do is they harvest whatever it is they have on the sides of their cards. This person, this nice lady, she's very adventury, um, gives me a crystal and a coin. Now, a coin is really a wild. Remember, Jen got herself a coin right from the get-go. A coin collected over here is a flask used for research. A coin collected over here is a uh, crystal for exploration, you know, to power those airships. And a coin over here is a cog to uh, help you make more inventions. So if I put her over here, she'd give me a crystal and a cog. Which means I'd uh, move up the uh, engineering track. So, who am I going to play and where am I going to play them? Is the decision you have to make 18 times over the course of this game. And there's a lot that goes into it. So, where, where do I want to go? Well, first of all, here's the deal, folks. I have a hot air balloon. If I don't use this this year, I will lose it. So you better believe I am going to explore the Delta. Which means, if I look a little bit more closely at the Delta, we start out here in uh, Badaku, uh, this, in this city island. And from here, we can reach uh, Salama and uh, Morns and uh, Canopia, etc., etc. Now you can see some of them, to get to Morns, I don't need a hot air balloon. I can just walk here because there's already a bridge. But I do need three crystals to be able to explore this and get three points. Now, 
I don't want to explore more in Zen because I only get to make one island exploration around. And I don't want to waste my hot air balloon. So I want to use the hot air balloon to go over here to Monaco or over here to Sella. <clears throat> but to come to those places, I need two crystals. I have no crystals right now. So I want to make sure before I explore, I've got the crystals. I already have the hot air balloon I need to make it here. But I need the crystals. So what might make sense is that I use Nice Adventure Lady. Because if I send her here, she'll give me one of the crystals I need, and this coin will be the second crystal. And then, if I give her the hot air balloon, because again, if I don't use it, I lose it, she's got the two crystals, and she's got a hot air balloon for me to get over here and score three points by exploring. And then on a future turn, I'd be able to reach uh, Slava, where I need two hot air balloons to sail. And then I could keep on working my way up to Mesa, which is worth 11 points if I could make it there by the end of the game. And along the... Or I could head over to Monaco, which leads to uh, uh, Loya, which could get me some precious Dragonfly bonus tiles if I go that way. So... In fact, actually, I think I like that. I think I like sailing over here so the next time I explore, I can get one of these bonuses, plus six points. So that means I need the crystals, I need the hot air balloon. So she's ready to go. This could be my first turn. I put her here, she harvests two crystals, I give her the hot air balloon, and then I explore and get to Monaco and score three points. But here's the deal, folks. Everything in this game is a race. Because if I'm the first to get here, Jen could still explore that island, but it would cost her an additional crystal. So you want to get to islands before anybody else. But you want to race in the other locations as well. Especially because <clears throat> if I do this, I'm actually committing to something else with her. She has one star, one speed. You will notice at the top of each of the three regions, there are cards waiting to be drafted at the end of the round. There are a two-player game, so there's two animals to research, there's two missions to um, undertake, and um, over here, there are two more people to recruit. And uh, I would like to choose which of these two, because if I um, don't have the highest initiative, Jen gets first dibs and I take whatever's left over. So now, here's the deal. If I come here with one star, Jen, I know... She's got some speedy folks. If Jen comes here with this person, two stars means even though I got here first, then Jen would win the speed and she would get first dibs on these animals. Now, if she came here with somebody with only one star, then it's a tie and the tie would be broken by whoever got here first. So once again, I would get first dibs in the draft later on. So, by sending this person here, I am not. I am putting myself in a situation where I might not get first dibs to study... Oh man, these are such cool creatures. The, um, um, I don't know how to say it, mechanimal, uh, mechanical animal um, turtle or the bull. Each one of them gives me different powers. This gives me engineering research for the rest of the game. This one, oh, this one gives me a free exploration bonus. So this is a good one to have if I feel like I'm really going to go heavy into engineering. This is a good one to have if I feel like I'm going to really go heavy into exploration. So, all things being equal, if I'm thinking I'm going to be a big explorer this game, I want to get that turtle. I want that turtle. But, on the other hand, i got to ask myself, um, by coming here first, I might be seeding first opportunities for these cards or those cards. And those missions are important because if I can get this mission, it says I get six points at the end of the game if I've explored at least twice in each of the three Delta regions. The forest, the swamp, the desert. So, so I kind of want to get this. I don't want to miss out on this because instead, if I get this one, this one says, hey, I get five points at the end of the game if I've got ex invented at least three times. Which means if I end up getting this, I've really got to pivot hard into inventions so that I can pull this off. And, and this is a game, like uh, most games, folks, where you can't do it all. If you really focus a lot on inventions, you're going to sacrifice somewhere else. And I've already decided I want to be the big explorer. So here's the thing. I don't want to get saddled with this mission. I want to make sure I get that mission. So I could do this later because honestly, I'd be happy getting either of those animals. So we're going to wait a bit. I am not going to deploy her as my first action. I want to get over to the research laboratory stat and I want to get there with a fast person so that no matter what happens here, I guarantee that I get that mission. And so that means I've got two fast people. And then I've got two, or I've got right in my hand right now, three slow people who are not going to help me um, win the cards I want, and two medium speed people. So I'm going to send one of these two over to the research lab. And all things being equal, um, 
Well, this one, she'll harvest me one flask. This one will harvest me one cog. Those cogs are great for points and also to help me invent stuff. If I don't think I'm going to be inventing as much, then I probably want to be doing more research. And if I'm exploring a lot, I probably want to do a lot of research based on what I explore. So I like her. She is going to be my first deployment. And I am going to send her over to the lab. As you can see, folks, I know that was a lot, but there's just a lot that goes into this decision-making process. So I'm going to send her over. And um, she harvests for me one flask right now. Hello. Uh, I will be able to use this in researching later. And um, nothing else. It shows two flasks, but that's just so you can fan your cards left or right. She only gives me one flask. Now, she is done with her harvesting. Now, she can interact with the research library. And the different areas lets you do different things. Of course, coming to the Delta means you explore. Coming to the research library means you yeah, research. And by default, I could do either of these two things. But I can't do this thing, which is public uh, publish a research paper unless I actually came here with a a scientist. And remember, my super smarty pants scientist is exhausted in the discard pile, so I could not have come here with my engineer slash scientist to be able to research this. So, research papers, that's going to have to wait for later. I cannot do that. But I can still have her do some basic research into the four different types of mechanical animals there are. And all things being equal, because there is a turtle and a bull out there on display, I probably want to research turtles or bulls. Now, how do I do this research? It reminds me right here. Once, every time I come to the research laboratory, one time I can trash one of my crew and research an animal represent, you know, this is the feather for researching the flamingos, the uh, scales for the turtle, the uh, tail for the horse, and the, the, the horn for the bull. So, if I want to trash one of these cards forever uh, to research a turtle or a bull, then that means it's going to be that one, or that one, or that one. Because these all would, I could say, hey, I want you to spend the rest of the game in the research library researching the horses or the flamingos. Or, um, so, it's going to be one of these. And this guy's great. For exploring. He's got a built-in air balloon. So I'm not definitely not getting rid of him. Which means, either way, I am researching turtles. Because I'm going to give up one of these to research turtles. And you know what? This is the guy who gives me a lot of speed, but gives me cogs for inventions. And if I'm not going to go down the invention route, I say, Goodbye, bowler hat man. You're outsville. You stay over there. And you, for me, research those sweet, sweet turtles. Okay. And now what that means is, folks, at the end of the game, since I made one research, for every turtle card I have, they are worth one point. If I could research three more turtles uh, three more times, every turtle I card I would get would be worth four points. So I'm starting to make a name for myself in the uh, turtle academia. All right. So there's one other thing I could do, which is if... I already had an animal card in hand. I could spend the amount of flasks required to activate their special ability. I don't lose them. I'd still get points for them. I get points for them whether I ever activate them or not. But um, as it happens, while I do have one flask, I do not have any animal cards. So she was not able to do this other action. So she... Um, gave me speed to give me the mission I want. She gave me a flask for research later. And she told somebody else, bowler hat guy, to beat feet and go study turtles. That was it, folks. As you can see, there's a lot that goes into every card you play in this game. And now it's Jen's turn. And Jen's in a tough spot because she doesn't know. Well, she knows I get first dibs on these missions. Because the best she could do would be to play a two-speed. Now, if... She had chosen to come here to get a star, then she could have paid a two speed, given that person a third star, and then Jen would get first dibs on the missions. But she didn't choose that. She chose an extra coin, an extra resource. So whoever Jen, I mean, and Jen, remember, we're going to go to each of these locations. So Jen is going to come here, and whoever she comes here with, she gets the leftovers. And she doesn't know yet. Well, actually, she could intuit. She knows I took this, and that implies I might want to explore. So Jen could guess. She could hypothesize that I came here to ensure I get that mission. Especially because if she looks around, there's another interesting thing too. There are two scientific papers that could be uh, published. One of them has to do with exploring uh, the west and the central element areas of the delta. And the other one has to do with traveling far with, um, uh, with the uh, dirigibles. So Jen guesses, I'm probably going to go heavy into exploration. Which means... 
I'm probably going to take that, which means she's probably going to get this one that rewards her at the end of the game if she does a lot of inventions. So maybe she should turn her eye towards inventing. And if she were to do that, well, um, if we look at the three inventions that are available right now, each of them requires four cogs. Uh, you know, so they're fairly expensive. Now, at the beginning of the game, it's lucky that the only resource we start with besides all our followers is we have exactly four cogs. So Jen has enough engineering know-how to invent any of those things. Um, but she still would need to play, remember, she, uh, her super smarty pants uh, scientist slash engineer is not exhausted. Jen could play this over here. What the coin means, Jen would generate a cog, so she'd go up to five cogs, and then she could spend four of her five cogs to invent any of these and start working on inventions. And of all of them, she might want to go for this one because at the end of the year, whatever is on top is gone. Uh, there's a little reminder, hey, whatever, you know, the inventions, they come and they go. This invention, now these are um, all one-timers. This would give her four crystals to help her explore. This would give her a pilot to help her explore. This would give her two crystals and a ship to help explore. So all three of those are going to be nice for exploration. Although there is, of course, you might have guessed, a downside to coming here with this. Her scientist, Super Smarty Pants, is super slow. So Jen, uh, by using this here, probably means if I come here with a one or a two star character, I'll get first dibs on those characters. But hey, if I come here with a zero star character, then Jen, will uh, the tie will be broken in her favor and she'll get first dibs. So I think right out of the gate, yeah, Jen's going to go invent because she thinks inventing is in her future. So first of all, she comes here. This says, hey, get one cog. And if Jen wants, remember, Jen has another coin. She could spend this right now with this person and give herself another cog if she had some really big, expensive invention to uh, to make. Like, oh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I take that back. Uh, four is the most expensive invention you can do. Uh, but there's ones that only cost two or three cogs. Hmm, and there's all these expensive inventions. Maybe it does make sense for her going to do this and just get another cog. Although, there's another reason to get cogs as well. You use cogs to make inventions that you can use for special you know, benefits and whatnot. And you can also, if you don't use cogs, the higher you go up this track, the more points. If Jen has 17 cogs at the end of the game, she scores 15 points. So that's something to consider as well. So she's got at least one cog. Does she go for another cog? No. I think she's going to save this coin for later because she already has enough. So the um, core action that you saw me do over here were these actions, and then this could be done with a specialist. The interesting thing about the workshop is there is no core action. You send somebody over here just to gather their resources. But if they are a super smart engineer, then in addition to gathering resources, they can also invent stuff. So Jen gathered her resources. She is going to make an invention. She is going to, um, now she is down to one cog. And which one does she want? And now the nice thing about all of these, the reason they're so expensive, is they give you resources to help you explore, and they let you do a bonus exploration on a turn. Normally, in a given round, you only get to explore once. So you can only explore six islands over the course of the game. But each one of these, when you activate them, lets you immediately do a bonus exploration. And there's a lot of islands to explore. So Jen, does she want a pilot to help her get to the really tough spots? Because Jen doesn't know if she's going to be able to recruit this pilot up here. She might end up getting this explorer instead. Does she want crystals? Because maybe she'll just try to stick to exploring places uh, that don't need pilots. Or does she want this one that gives her uh, less crystals, but an extra airship as well? Hmm... I think she'll just go for lots of crystals. So Jen just invented this. It cost her four cogs. She holds on to this, and whenever she wants, she flips it to give herself four crystals and a bonus explore action that turn. Okay, so Jen's first action is done, and she saves this for a rainy day. So me, I'm probably only going to explore, at this point, six uh, things in this world, Jen will probably explore seven, even though I fancy myself to be the better explorer. But that invention is going to put Jen over the top, and a new one comes out. And it is, oh, uh, uh, this one takes three cogs to invent this. This counts as an extra animal tile for in-game scoring. If you get this, and say you had researched flamingos three times, this is worth three points, as an example. So anyway, so that's available. That was Jen's first turn. It is now my second turn. And uh, what am I going to do? 
Alrighty. Well, remember, I wanted to explore. I'd already figured out how I was going to do it. Let's go on ahead and do this now. Because I know... All I, all I gotta do is just play a one star over here, and I'll get first dibs on these cards because Gen went in so slow. So if I come over here, I might have first chance. I mean, because remember, I want that turtle. Gen knows I want that turtle. I could, and I don't have any other two stars. So I'm gonna come here with a one star and hope that I can get that turtle instead of Gen getting it. So I come here. This person says, "Hey, I get a crystal," and that coin says, uh, "Another crystal." I will then give this person the uh, you uh, these are you have to use these or lose them. As soon as you play a card, it's at that moment and that moment only that you can apply them. So I've given her the um, the hot air balloon, the dirigible. I am going to spend these two crystals that she just harvested so that we can set sail. And where did I want to go? Oh, I want to come up here so I could get to these dragonflies. So I'm cross. I needed one. I needed two. Boom, and I get. Three points. And now it is Jen's turn. And I think Jen says, hey, you know what? Well, let's see. Okay, Jen's got a choice. She was thinking about coming here and using her invention right out of the gate with this super explorer and doing a double explorer right now. And that'd be pretty cool. But he's very slow. And if Jen does that, she knows she's given me that turtle because she knows I want that turtle. Instead, she could come here and get a crystal and two stars and keep that turtle from me. So that's a very interesting. Or she could come here with this and get a flask that she can't use for exploration, although she could still try to explore. Although without any crystal, she won't be able to do it. Although she can generate the crystals with this. No, 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 no. I, I think I think she she's excited. She says, hey, I am going to send this guy out and I'm going to use that invention. It's a one-time thing. And so that means Jen is going to get to flip this and do two exploration actions. But first of all, first things first, Jen gets a hot air balloon, um, which she's going to need. She gets a coin, which is a crystal. So she gets two crystals. And then she uses this to get um, four more crystals. So she has six total crystals now right? And a hot air balloon. And she gets to make two explorers. How about her first explorer is to uh, go this way using her hot air balloon that she used and that gets her two points and now for her bonus explore she still she only needed um, one crystal to get in there she need she has five more crystals those five will let her jump over here and so just like that Jen has gotten seven points and she can reach all the way up into this area to try to go for a big in game. Um, 11 points by making all the way up there, although she would also need a pilot to get up there. So anyway, just like that, Jen has used her invention. It'll still help her if she has this mission at the end of the game. Um, she didn't give herself any speed, so she's giving me first dibs over there. But she's the greatest explorer the world has ever seen. She knows more about this Delta than anybody. Go figure. And I thought that was kind of my gig. Alrighty, so we're back to me. Oh, folks, and by the way, I've completely forgotten. Uh, always watch with the Klingon subtitles turned on. You may have noticed we have these little markers. We we're supposed to use these markers to keep track of who did what. I did this, I did this, Jen did this, and Jen did this. Now, this is just for the uh, for the real game. The starting cards will actually have our colors up here, but my prototype doesn't. So, I mean, this is so that we remember, hey, at the end of the game, wait, was that mine or yours? I got here first. I've got one star. Jen got here second with no stars. I get first dibs. You know I want that sweet mechanical tortoise. Anyway, though. So, um, I now am going to play my third, and it must come over here to the workshop, because I've already gone to the other two locations, and who am I going to send here? Well, I don't think it makes sense for me to send anybody who would give me a hot air balloon, which I would then subsequently not be able to use, because I've already explored. So that leaves just one fella, this fella, right here, who gives me one flask that I cannot use over here, but still gives me a flask, and the coin says, hey, I'll have some workshop, get a cog. And because this fella is not an engineer, I do not get to do any invention. So that's it. All they did was just give me two resources plus first dibs on those cards because one star is faster than no stars. And now Jen's last placement. Uh, oh, and I'm supposed to mark this. Jen's last placement is over here. And Jen realizes in her zest and excitement for exploration, she's made a bit of a mistake. She is hypothesizing that when this draft happens, she's going to get the bull. So she wants to come over here. She wants to study bulls. We have one bull character. It's this one. Jen cannot discard him now to study. So with that aside, who is she going to send over here? Well, no reason to send somebody fast because 
Jen would still at best tie with her two stars, so she's not going to send somebody fast. And um, right, 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 see. So, and there's nobody here that would generate hotter balloons. So, all things being equal, who is she going to go for here? Well, you know what? She is low, low, low on cogs. So, she could send this person over here to get a cog plus a flask. So, she can start refilling to do more. Although, if she sends over here, it's two cogs for later. And, I mean, she knows she's getting this. So, she wants to have at least two more inventions done. So, I don't think she'll send this to get more cogs over there later. Although... Oh, and although, I forgot, I forgot, Jen hasn't used this yet. She didn't use it here to give herself a crystal or here to give herself another cog. So she's going to use it here to get herself a flask. So, what the heck? Let's go flask crazy. Let's have this person come here. Give him the coin, and so he gives Jen one, two, three flasks. Which is actually not bad, because Jen's assuming she's going to end up getting the bull. And the bull requires four flasks to do proper research. And the nice thing is, once Jen has the bull, once per turn, she can use him to get more cogs. So they can. Uh, so actually, that works out pretty well. Pretty well indeed. So this person came over here, uh, harvested, got three. Uh, and now, if Jen wants, she has no animal cards, so she can't do a uh, deeper study on them but, and unlock their powers. But she can study... Uh, the flamingo, the horse, or the turtle. But I think she's not going to bother because she doesn't know. I mean, if she if she could study, the, but, but she's just going to hold on to her cards for later, keep herself more flexibility. Although, I mean, our animals are going to come out. Is there any of these she'd be willing to give up? Uh, you know, if she, hey, actually, maybe she will give up this super speedster. Uh, it's an opportunity to get crystals, but if she's already done her big explosion of exploration. She's not going to do much more. Then it might make sense to um, say goodbye and start studying a flamingos. Especially because this invention is a flamingo. Or more importantly, a mechanical. You can't quite see it in this picture, but she's got mechanical wings. The flamingo. So, okay, uh, Jen will go on ahead, discard one, or does she discard the fast one? Or does she discard the rich one? She has to discard one of these two to study flamingos. Well, no, you know, she'll discard the rich one because she knows she's going to be getting a cog in uh, income over there later on. Or at least she assumes. She doesn't know for sure. All right, and so she marks that that was hers. So we were both beginning our research, and we have finished the first of six years. Except now we have to resolve the draft, and we do it from left to right. Um, Jen got here first, but I was faster, so I get first dibs on these two fine fellows. To join the team. And Jen's going to get the other one. This one is a captain. If I want to be able to explore certain islands, I need a captain. This one says, hey, every time you explore, you get an extra point. And generates two crystals in a coin as opposed to two flasks. I want those crystals and more points for exploring. But I want that captain. I want them both. Oh, but I want this too. Because if I ever trash this, I study bulls and turtles. Whereas this, if I trash this, I only study bulls. All right, I'll take the captain. Which means it goes into my hand, and that means Jen gets the other one. And she was happy either way. Then we come over here. I've got one star. Jen's got none. I will take, as predicted, the turtle. And Jen, as predicted, gets the bull. And now over here, again, I know this is, is preordained, folks. There's a lot of long-term planning in here. I want this mission. Although it's interesting, Jen, kind of, Jen is doing better on this than me. She's already gotten two explorers done on the left side. But too bad. And Jen's like, hey, that's fine. I plan on inventing anyway because she anticipated which way the wind was going to blow. And now at the end of the year, a bunch of cool stuff happens. First of all, there's a reminder right here. Bye-bye to this invention. Uh, it's gone. The others slide up. A new one comes out. Hey, it is a bonus bull if you uh, do that. So that's more points potentially at the end of the game. Um, what else? Oh, and uh, this reminds us that in other in later rounds, more stuff. Like uh, these things shift. There's a, there's a bunch of extra things. But in this round, one of those goes away. We have new cards to draft. Another pilot. And, oh, a scientist. Uh, which means you could start publishing papers. And let's see, what do we got here? We've got a flamingo. You know Jen wants that, and I know she wants it too. And a horse. And then new mission types. There is six points um, if you max out the turtle and the bull, if you make them all the way to the top. And, um, oh, an extra five points if you're at least up to 16 cogs, which means you're probably at 17 for extra points. So we've got all that. 
But then here's where things get really interesting, folks. All these people who are exhausted, we get to pick one of these exhausted piles and add them. And I want my super smart man. Where have you been? Oh, I was taking, I was on a sabbatical. And Jen gets to take one of these as well. Cogs, super explore cogs, super, hmm. Uh, this one for studying more flamingos. She will take that. And now the other characters, they get added to the other decks. So on a future turn, Jen could take this and get two cards or this and get one card. And the same for me, my middle, my left, and my right end up going to all those spaces. Okay. And the uh, items we use go back because you're, you're, whether you use them or not, you use them or lose them. And um, we are ready to go on to round two. And uh, once again, we have to figure out who's going to go first. And it's going to be me because whoever has the most cogs gets to choose what bonus tile you want first. And the game continues. And if you'd like to see a little bit more of Delta action, folks, you can hit that I up in the top right corner screen and go to the extended playthrough. Or you can go to Final Thoughts. Your choice uh, in five. Follow the links in the show notes. Four, you know what to do. Three, two, one.